Hello, I'm Atuba George and today is the last day of the month of March 2021. Hey, guess what? You will never see today again. <laughs> it's gone. It's gone. And you know what the Spirit of God is saying? Forget the former things. Forget it. Now, when God says forget the former, you know some people say, and he's telling us to forget the bad things. No, including the good ones. Now, when he says forget, what's he saying? He's not saying wipe it out of your memory. He says don't dwell in the past. If January till now has been bad for you, hear what the Spirit of God is saying, forget it. If you haven't walked by faith from January till now, the Spirit of God is saying, forget it. If you have been so blessed and you have enjoyed so much blessing, you know what the Spirit of God is saying? Forget it. Why should I forget it? You have not seen anything yet. Praise God. Why? He says, behold, I do a new thing. Wow. Now, why is he saying forget? Because the good you have might prevent you from stepping into that great thing that God has for you. You remember I told you this last week about Abraham. At his old age, God promised him a son. And he believed God. And he received the physical son, Isaac. But guess what? God showed up and said, Abraham, give me this son. Go and offer him up as, on one of the mountains of Moriah. We didn't read Abraham arguing with God. Say, God, you can't, you can't try that. Like, you, you can't. Not, no way, you can't try that. You remember that woman who, who, who was taking care of Elijah? He said, Elisha, yeah. And then he, he came to her and told her, look, what should I do for you? He said, no, I'm fine. I'm good. And then his servant whispered to her, she doesn't have a child. He said, oh, all right, you will have a child. He said, hey, man of God. I did not. I said, you will have a child. And you know what happened? As, as, as life went on, this child died. And the woman went to look for the man. You know what she said to him? Ogasa, I was living in peace. So. You are the one that came. I didn't ask. You are the one that came and said that I will have a son. I had already made up my mind and I'm fine. You are the one that come, came to tell me I will have a son. Now, son has come. So, now the son is dead. So, what was the purpose of this? You know, some people are like that. <laughs> you know, you are doing your own thing. You are used to struggling in life and then God comes and tells you look I'm changing your life and he said God are you sure you don't leave me like this <laughs> you know but hey thank God she took the child to the source of that prophecy and guess what that child came back to life praise <laughs> God yeah and he said even as a, as, a, as a man of God you must learn to take responsibility for the prophecies that you give now that is where understanding comes in See, Elisha could have gone. You know, Elisha sent his servant first and said, Hey, go take this, my staff, and, and just go and do some stuff. And then the child would come, up, would come back to life. The child did not come back to life. Elisha had to go himself. Now, at that point, he could have said, Well, woman, I, I believe God will give you another child. Don't worry. Let God give you. No, no, no. He took responsibility for his prophecy and brought that child back to life. Praise God. Yeah. So, when God says, meanwhile, God told Abraham, hey, give up this child. And Abraham said, okay, if that's what you want, I will. And I told you last week, it was that sacrifice that opened Abraham up to receive the real son, which is Christ. Christ is the real. Now, that's how we all came to become the children of Abraham see true Christ so when God told Abraham I will bless you and you will become a father of many nations you see how it's fulfilled if he had refused to give up Isaac now of course we know he didn't end up killing Isaac but according to the scriptures he had already killed him in his heart and he had already seen him raised from the dead in his heart so if he hadn't done that Abraham would have just been a father of Israel. See, that's, that's where it would have stopped. 
But hey, because he obeyed God, trusting in that spirit of prophecy, guess what? Every nation on the earth today, China, Nigeria, Cameroon, India, think about it. Every nation under heaven have people who are named after Abraham. You know what that means? I'm not talking about people who are called Abraham as in a name. No, if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. So I imagine Abraham in heaven right now looking down and seeing the fulfillment of what God told him. Praise God. Yeah. How amazing that is when you obey God to the full. You know, sometimes God blesses you. I told you that last week. Don't let the blessing that you have today to stop you from receiving the real thing that God has said. If God blesses you with a job, I tell you the truth, a day will come, that job will come to an end. No matter how long you stay at that job, you will retire one day. Or that job, that organization will lose its value sometime. And then you become jobless. No matter how good you are. But you see, when you connect with God's eternal blessing, you will be the fulfillment of those the scripture says that even in their old age, they will still be bringing forth fruits. So you will get up to 80, 90, 100. You will still be bringing forth ideas that will be bringing in money. Praise <laughs> God. You know, you just be there and say, hey, you know, you just sleep and wake up. I say, hey, have you tried this and this? And let's start a new business. Say, ah, as what? Yes. Because your life never ends. And that's one of the things that will make you live long. See, I'll tell you the truth. People die early. Most people die early. You see someone good health, everything. And then, you know, people get to a stage, you know, like psychologists have said, most people when they retire, you know, people who do work, like do a job, when they retire, a great percentage of them don't live long after that. Why? No vision anymore. Because in their mind, they feel we have, we, have, we have used up our life, you know, serving this organization. So now they just feel there's nothing to live for again. I have done, I was the best accountant in, in my, amongst my peers. Yes. So now that you have retired, what next? See, what drives us, what keeps people alive is vision. You wake up today, you're looking forward to the things that you need to accomplish tomorrow. I'm telling you the truth. If you live like that, you will live very long. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. You will live there. But when you start thinking, you know, you sit down on a rocking chair and you say, ah, where are my grandchildren? You come and visit me and they come and visit you. You say, you know, when I was this, that's all the stories you have for them. No, 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 no. Have those stories, yes. Tell them where they are coming from, but also point them to the future that you see. Don't tell them that we have lived our days. Who are we? You, go and live, go and do your own. No! Send them to go do their own and tell them, listen, I'll be here backing you up. I'll be here dreaming dreams. So that's what the scripture says. Old men shall dream dreams. I will dream dreams and I'll tell you what's going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, that's how to live. If you don't have physical strength, don't let your mind to be weak. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And, and that can only happen when you are receiving the testimony of Jesus Christ. See, that's where I'm going to. See, nothing stops you from praying. Nothing stops you from hearing the voice of God. Nothing stops you from seeing visions. Nothing stops you from, no man can stop you from doing that. Even if they lock you in a dungeon, you can still see visions. You can still talk to the Lord. You can still receive prophecies and you can still fulfill them. Praise God. That's the truth. No wonder Moses, the Bible says Moses was 120 years old. His eyes were not dim. His strength was not weak. He was ready to go and God had to say, it is enough. Moses, it's enough. <laughs> it's God. He was still ready to go on. Why? Because of the visions he was seeing. The things God was communicating to him. You want to live long? Spend time with the Spirit of God. 
don't, don't, don't start forming, I'm an old man now, let me start praying for my children's generation. No! Pray for them, but also ask the Lord, Lord, is there anything you will have me do? Praise <laughs> God. Then someone say, no, there's nothing I can do, there's anything I can do, so sit down and be praying for. No, 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 sir. No, no. Ask the Lord. Yeah, but, but my legs are weak. If the Lord gives you an assignment, he will strengthen your legs. Praise God. Yes, I'm telling you the truth. And there is no way you'll be hearing the voice of God. you start losing memory. How? When, when you wake up in the morning, say, Holy Spirit, what are we talking about? What are we discussing today? And then you'll not start losing memory. Remember what Jesus said. It is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. So listen, don't, don't say I'm an old man. Start, all you do is read books, read books, read books, read books. It's good to read. But beyond the reading, be hearing the voice of God. Why? It is the spirit that quickens. When you are spending time hearing the voice of God, sometimes you wake up and say, Holy Spirit, teach me something today. Teach me something new today. See, that's all you do. He will visit you. And as it begins to, your understanding is enlightened. Your memory becomes sharp. People who hear the voice of God are the most intelligent people on earth. I'm telling you the truth. You say, how? I'm telling you the truth. Why? Because they are the ones that will hear and say, don't move out. Don't go to this area. And then everybody says, oh, we're going to this area. Maybe they have even planned to go. And then he just comes and says, you know what? I'm not going. Why? I just don't feel like going. Eh, we'll leave you now. And then they go. They get into trouble. You're exempted. How did you know? Eh? You hear a voice that they didn't hear. Now you can use that same voice of the Holy Spirit in everything. Didn't Jesus say he will teach you all things? Not only spiritual things. He will teach you how to cook. He will teach you how to make your hair. He will teach you how to dress. Oh, yes. Sometimes finish dressing up and ask him, Holy Spirit, how do I look? What do you think about my dressing today? Oh, do. You see, when you invite him, then he will visit. When you think it's not necessary, he will stay away. Now, when you begin to invite him in everything, you have a business meeting, Holy Spirit, what do you think we should talk about in this business meeting? See, don't just say, Holy Spirit, as I go for this meeting, guide me, don't let any evil to happen to me. You know, because you see him as your escorter, you know, he will escort you to the meeting and you will not have the meeting, he will escort you back. <laughs> no, sir. No. Ask him for ideas. Lord, is there anything you want me to know as we go for this meeting? You know, you know the heart of these people I'm going to meet. So is there any information you want me to have? And while you're going there, you will just hear him say, talk about this. Don't mention this one. <laughs> okay, sir. So, mention this. Yes, sir. Thank you. Now write it down. And then you go for the meeting. Say, hello. You know, and then you begin to, they had planned for you. You know, sometimes it happens that way. They had planned for you. They say, this is how we're going to trap him. When he comes, we're going to ask him to talk about this. And then you say, sorry, um, can you talk about this? He say, no, you know, today is not the forum for that. Let's, let's leave that for another day. And then you say, ah, <laughs> praise God. But you have been delayed. Why? Because you have, say, people, they, they come and say, God, this man is so intelligent too. How did he? It's like, it's like he knew. That he knew our Somebody must have leaked our secret to him. No! He's got the Holy Spirit. So his brain works beyond your brain. Praise <laughs> God. And, and this is it. If your brain can analyze the things that God is saying, man, you are super intelligent. See? Yes, you are super intelligent. What do I mean? Some, some, when God speaks, don't try to analyze it. Just obey. No! We analyze his word. But how do we analyze his word? We don't analyze his word with our carnal senses. The Bible says those that are spiritual, they compare spiritual with spiritual. You understand? So when God tells you, I want, to, I want you to do this, and like, mm, that looks impossible. But hey, hey, but, but God... He's the God of impossibilities. Nothing is impossible with him. So if he's telling me to, what I do, you are analyzing his word. But see how you're doing it. You are not doing it like a human being. You're doing it like a God. See? So he said, all things are possible with God. So if he's the one telling me to do it, just like when he sent the children of Israel to go spy the land, 12 spies were sent. 10 
saw giants. Two saw giants too. But guess what they said? They said, hey, look, if God have said to us, he will give us the land, then let us rise up and go and take it, for he will surely give us the land. What do you think they were doing? Analyzing God's word. The other said, man, if we come here, see these giants, they will attack us. Nah, nah, no. How do we attack them? You know, these guys are strong. We may not aim right. We may not. They were analyzing too. But these other two analyzed and see their result. If God have said he has given us the land, despite the giants, let's go and take it. You remember this miracle? You remember that city? You remember that city? And so what are we talking about? Analyzing the world. Praise God. Whoa, our time is up already. Listen, I want to see you tonight at 12 midnight. And let's pray together. And, and I'll, begin, I'll be sharing things the Lord has said concerning the month of April with you. I don't want you to miss that. Have a prophecy fulfilling day today. And I pray that everything that is of March is being fulfilled today. In Jesus name. Amen. Bye bye.